what's happening everybody trey here and it is time for another edition already july came and went pretty quick it seems for what i listened to and watched in july so as always y'all we're uh, gonna be looking first at the music and the albums i listen to try to listen to at least one record a day and watch one movie a day and uh, so hopefully there's some good stuff here for everybody in uh, all types of eras genres for both film and music and then uh, after we take a look at the uh, uh, albums I listen to will transition to the film that way if you're not a film fan you can uh, dip on out but hey man check check it out there there's a lot of good good flicks I watch a lot of great records I listen to and uh, in the description I'll have my uh, top five recommendations for each if you want to maybe add something to the listen list or watch list but uh, hey man enough of my jabbering also be uh, using rage your music uh, and Letterbox links will be down there. If you'd like to follow me there, highly recommend uh, getting an account with uh, both of those if you're a film or music lover. But uh, anyways, man, let's uh, jump into it. Before we get started, anything just based on my rating scale, anything three and a half stars or above I rated, I would uh, suggest that if you are a fan of that particular genre, four stars is kind of my barometer for the peak of most artists and uh, just a really darn great record. Anything above that is kind of a rare grade I give and uh, is highly recommended, but let's get going. Started off the month with Talk Talk's record Spirit of Eden. I was familiar with the record they had after this mark hollis and the gang came out with uh, laughing stock which is one of my favorite records i've heard this year so i had to go back and hear this one as well and i was yet again not disappointed so much beautiful uh, production on this record with uh, some heavy themes and especially in the track i believe in you which uh, was written to uh, Hollis's brother, who was uh, dealing with uh, addiction at the time. A very powerful tune, a standout for me. Uh, really love Talk Talk, and uh, curious to finish up their discography at some point. Then had the Alan Parsons Project, I Robot full album reaction is up on there. Shout out to our uh, guy Kev the Trucker on that. Very uh, impressed with. Alan uh, Parsons on this one, some great instrumentals on there, cool little concept, and uh, you know, you want to hear further track by track thoughts, you can check that out there, and same thing on Neil Young's Tonight's of the Night, another killer record from Neil here in the 70s, and uh, he was absolutely on fire, yet again, I'm not going to go too in depth on that, because we have a review up of that, as well as Bob Dylan's Love and Theft, I enjoyed it quite a bit more than Time Out of Mind, and uh, the thought that going away from that uh, Daniel Lanois production helped Bob out here, and that track Mississippi is uh, is one of Bob's uh, better tunes, I think, in his catalog in general. And then we got Kate Bush. I uh, went back and listened to her debut as well, The Kick Inside. I had heard it about a year plus ago. That is a phenomenal debut record. Uh, it has Wuthering Heights, which is one of her most famous tunes, and the title track is great. And then her second album, Lionheart, is still a solid definitely a step down from the kick inside but uh hey kate's still coming out and uh, has those beautiful arrangements and just that voice that is unmistakable and then we got uh pink floyd's the endless river finally uh, finished up their uh, catalog and should have a video up uh ranking their discography pretty darn soon um not a huge fan of this record. We got Otis Redding's Otis Blue, one of the most acclaimed records of all time, and boy, this did not disappoint. Of course, you got the world-renowned and famous My Girl, but uh, you also have Otis doing uh, Change Is Gonna Come, which I didn't think any version would ever uh, come close to Sam Cooke's, but hey, Otis got the job done there. You got respect on there. Uh, so many classic tunes, and uh, just if anybody says they dislike this album, don't trust that. That person, all right. I, I don't see how anybody cannot at least uh, appreciate a couple tracks on Otis Blue. Definitely one of my highly recommended ones of the month. Then we got Alice Cooper's Billion Dollar Baby. Shout out to my guy Evan David for suggesting this one to me. I enjoyed this uh, for what it was, and it kind of cracks me up that back in the day Alice was considered a, a bit of a menace to society. There was some uh, nice horror based uh, type of stuff in this record, and uh, I, I, I took it all very kind of tongue-in-cheek, though, but I, I guess back in 73, of course, 
Porsche. It was a, a little bit groundbreaking at the time. Then listen to Freddie Gibbs, who's one of the best uh, rappers in the game right now. Maybe he's not topping the charts or whatnot, but uh, bar for bar, I'd put him against pretty much anybody with uh, The Alchemist, one of the better producers in hip-hop. Really uh, enjoyed that. Thought it was a solid record. Uh, then we had Arcade Fire's Funeral. 2004, one of the better albums of uh, the 2000s, I think. A shout out to uh, Tom Williams for uh, suggesting that one. We got a full album review up of that. I think if you haven't found many uh, good bands in uh, the 2000s onward, I'd, I'd check out Arcade Fire, see, see what you dig there. Jay-Z's Reasonable Doubt from 96, a hip-hop classic. So many legendary tunes on this got uh kind of that mafioso type of a vibe on the uh, entire record of uh the track 22 twos unbelievable wordplay on that in particular brooklyn's finest with biggie is a, a, a certified hip-hop classic then we had the dissociatives self-titled have a full album reaction of that for our guy alan the only record released by uh, Daniel Johns and company here and, uh, you know, had some uh, nice little blending of electronica and, and rock in there. And then, as you can see on a little Miles Davis kick here, decided to just start from the beginning and go through. This is, you know, you're going way back whenever these were released on 10-inch LPs, people. Not even 12-inch LPs uh, were really around yet. So all these are really between 18 to 20. 20 minutes. Uh, nothing here really on any of these that uh, I would say go out of your way to listen to, but uh, hey man, it's Miles Davis, so you can't go too wrong, and though this is early in his career and really not much stuck with me, I don't regret listening to him. They were easy enough uh, to listen to as I was kind of doing some schoolwork. Ike Riley, Crooked Love, a very solid record. Again, I have a, a full album reaction of this coming up for one of our patrons, a uh, guy that doesn't really that popular but uh he's in his mid 50s has been making music for quite a while if you're a fan of uh, somebody like springsteen for instance uh, he also has some influences i'd say by uh, some petty i i'd check this one out very solid record got some more miles stuff and then uh we have my bloody valentine loveless another album review we did probably uh my favorite album review we uh, put up this past month just for how wild the story is on this one y'all go check that one out kevin shield really came out with the uh, shoegazing classic here and this is one that uh, I've revisited quite a bit in the past couple weeks and enjoyed uh, even more as I'm you know getting familiar with the shoegaze genre and then as you see some more Miles Davis rocking and rolling and then we got Blackfoot with their record strikes shout out to Kev the Trucker again uh, he's super chatted one of their songs Highway Song which uh, is the closer and one of the uh, better tracks I think you'll hear as a closer the whole record just has some great tunes to crank up and uh, rock out to. We go now to The Cure. 17 seconds, their second record. You have A Forest on here, which is uh, one of the highlights. The title track is very solid as well. You have the atmospheric gothic rock that you would expect from The Cure. I'm looking forward to going through more of their discography. I had already listened to this Here's a Little Richard record. I just had never rated it, never done that. Uh, spend 30 minutes to do so. And then we got Watch the Throne from Jay-Z and Kanye West from back in 2011. There were a lot of hits on this at the time. The two uh, billion dollar Man uh, teamed up and uh, produced a pretty good rap album. Then I went through Buffalo Springfield's catalog, only three albums. Obviously, going through a big Neil Young phase right now. Wanted to see what's up. We had their self titled debut, which has one of the best songs, I think, from the 60s for what it's worth. And that is actually the debut track on this record. And then after that, to be honest, a lot of it's just uh, kind of there for me. For what it's worth, is such a stark contrast to the rest of this record, which is heavily in some uh, country arrangements and just some basic folk arrangements that I didn't leave uh, overwhelmed. But uh, hey, if, if it brought us for what it's worth, I can't complain too much. I'm Petty and the Heartbreakers. Damn, the Torpedo's going to have a full album reaction to that up. It's already up on Patreon if you want to check that out. Can't go wrong with Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, man. I, I love Petty, and this was a phenomenal record so thank you rich 
for uh, suggesting that. Then we got Buffalo Springfield, second record, Buffalo Springfield again, which, in my opinion, is uh, definitely their best album. You have Mr. Soul on here, which uh, we've done a song reaction to, and uh, it's a good Neil Young composition. It also has Hung Upside Down, which I enjoyed quite a bit. It's about 33 minutes, 10 songs, so it doesn't overstay its welcome. You had The Last Time Around, which ends out their discography again around 32, 33 minutes or so and uh just some songs that uh were solid but just nothing that really stood out to me personally any buffalo springfield fans maybe uh give me some of your favorite tracks maybe i will revisit that and then we got kate bush's third record never forever uh, awful cover good record though it has a uh, babushka which starts off the album the wedding list is also very nice and you have the track army dreamers and breathing very very great one to punch to end out the record and sees kate uh, kind of stretching out her musical wings experimenting a little more which we would definitely get then on our next record the dreaming right here which uh i know some people that's their favorite kate bush record i uh out of all the ones i've heard up to this point i favor the kick inside just a little bit maybe that's a hot take i don't know kate is very angry on this album it's a lot more experimental than any of her other work up to this point and that kind of points a little bit to what we would get on that second side of hounds of love i um especially enjoyed the tracks all the love and then pull out the pen suspended in gaffa as well was pretty neat a good record that i would suggest and then really a really nice surprise here the marcus king band carolina confessions again full album reaction we did for somebody marcus king uh, is around my age you know mid-20s and he's a guy that uh, really is able to merge the blues with some southern rock a little bit of a uh, nice country all into his own unique flavor and I'm very excited to see what he and his group do in the future and would love to see him live so uh, maybe check that out if any of those genres uh you know strike your fancy finish out also the talking heads discography with their last record naked from 1988 definitely their worst album for me uh, not a lot here to grasp on besides uh, nothing but flowers which we uh, actually did a song reaction to so um who, who knows maybe i was more familiar with it a side definitely better than that b side where you have some of the worst stuff that the talking heads ever did but hey man then you get dead kennedy's debut record fresh fruit for rotting vegetables and if you're familiar with the ramones debut record just kind of take that uh, turn it up to 11 in um, the regards to anger and uh, kind of political themes. And then you got the Dead Kennedys right here. Their most famous track is on this record with Holiday in Cambodia. I also like California Uber Alice and Ill in the Head. Some of the titles on here, man, you can tell that's uh, that's hardcore punk right there. I uh, really enjoyed that one. And also enjoyed Sly and the Family Stones record Stand. Never heard a full Sly record, but man i was not disappointed everyday people one of their more famous tunes is on here as well as i want to take you higher uh, just some beautiful funk in here. The title track's also very solid. Um, you have a, the very long tune Sex Machine that's about 13 minutes. Um, so they, they vary it up on this, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to diving in more to their catalog. We got Tom Waits, The Heart of Saturday Night, which uh, review is coming up uh, real soon. And uh, not as good as Closing Time, but hey, man, still a really good Waits record that leans heavily into that jazzy, and uh, piano bar type of influences and then neil young and crazy horse coming out with zuma a uh, wonderful record of the most famous track on here would be Cortez the Killer. Uh, Danger Bird is another fantastic tune, and uh, some of Neil's best guitar work, I think, in his career is found on this album. We got Soundgarden's uh, second record, Louder Than Love, up next. Very heavy album, uh, really doesn't go to that grunge sound yet, more kind of in the, the metal, hard rock. Chris sounds great on here. Um, there's some filler, but 
all in all, it was an enjoyable album, and uh, I know I'm approaching their uh, more famous work with Super Unknown and Bad Motor Finger. Frank Ocean's Channel Orange, shout out to my guy Noah uh, for pushing me to listen to this one. I was also not disappointed in this. I've seen this on many top uh, albums of the 2010s list, and I wasn't disappointed uh, with Frank's R&B and uh, kind of soul, psychedelia, hip-hop genre blending. Lots of great tracks in here uh, with uh, the standouts being uh, Pyramids. And you also have uh, the track Pink Matter with one of my favorites of all time, Andre 3000, uh, Super Rich Kids with Earl Sweatshirt was also notable. But then we got Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band with Night Moves. Man, what an, what another great record. We're having a Seger Top 10 coming up real, real soon on the channel. Uh, he was a fantastic surprise for me. Of course, you have the title track, which is one of Seger's most famous songs on here. I also really dig Sunburst and uh, just... Uh, Bob Bob really uh, is one of the greats, I think, of Heartland Rock. This album is a testament to that. So, And then uh, we had some more miles to kind of end out the month, along with a Tribe Called Quest debut, People's Instinctive Travels, and the Pass of Rhythm. Say that ten times fast, y'all. Uh, a nice... 90s hip hop record here. I'm uh, looking forward to continuing through their discography. We got uh, Can I Kick It, which is one of uh, hip hop's most famous tunes on this, and uh, just some chill, jazzy type of uh, arrangements and some cool, uh, quirky lyrics as well. Then we had Fleetwood Mac, self titled. Uh, we got a top 10 list of that coming up too, man. I'll, you you kind of see my listening habits <laughs> based on what y'all shoot me. Unbelievable album that. Fleetwood Mac sound that you would expect in this era. You know, this is the record right before Rumors. Man, it was definitely a worthy song. I really enjoyed Sugar Daddy. I loved Crystal. Of course, you got uh, Stevie's track, Rhiannon, which is one of her more famous tunes. And Fleetwood Mac's one, one of the most famous tunes. And of course, Landslide, Love Me, some Stevie Nicks. And then I finished out the month listening to to Taylor Swift's new record, Folklore. She kind of dropped this out of the blue. And uh, I gotta say, I've never listened to a Taylor Swift album in full, but uh, this was pretty solid. My only complaint is it's 16 songs, about an hour long. And I think if this got chopped down to about 11, it would have went from good to great. But I will say, I do respect the fact that Taylor went out and uh, did something a little different, as its name suggests. More folky, stripped back instrumentation on here. Didn't really have a song that that stood out as like, oh, this is going to be a big, huge hit single. So I'm glad that she's bringing that. Hopefully uh, her fans will enjoy and maybe uh, push some other mega stars to uh, maybe branch out and uh, do do some different stuff. And uh, she had some nice personal stuff to say about uh, what she's going through, kind of with uh, these record labels and uh, rights to her music and all that headache. But uh, that's what I listened to this month. Shifting now over to movies. It was another busy month, y'all, and I watched a lot of great films, and so let's get rocking. I didn't start with a great film, though, but uh, that's okay. I got the bucket list. We had Jack Nicholson and Morgan Freeman, two actors I uh, really enjoy, but this just uh, fell a little flat for me. Uh, some of the dialogue in here I just found to be a bit cringy. Um, concept that works well on paper, you had good actors, but for some reason, just didn't work. Uh, I might be in the minority on that. But then we got the Coen Brothers classic, Big Lebowski. Absolutely love this one. Went four and a half on it. Definitely check this out if you never have. Shout out to all y'all that bugged me to go and watch this. I was definitely not disappointed. Jeff Bridges puts on a heck of a performance. And uh, the plot uh, keeps you going with twists and turns that you wouldn't expect. One of my favorites of this month. Then you had Pineapple Express, the... Uh, kind of stoner type of comedy in there with uh, James Franco and Seth Rogen. Uh, cool, you know, way to just pass a, a couple hours. Then my first Stanley Kubrick film, Full Metal Jacket, is one of my favorite films of this month. Of course, you have the uh, first half of the film at the uh, camp where they're training. William Defoe is fantastic in his role. Then the second half where we actually go to Vietnam is uh, some of the more harrowing scenes you'll see in a war film. So I can't wait to dive into more Kubrick. Give me suggestions of the next film of his I should watch. Harold and Maude, another uh, 
absolute classic here from 71 a quirky comedy that uh was a pretty dark honestly in a, in the surface but boy it worked in spades definitely suggest that one as well as terrence malick's 1978 days of heaven you know a man's dedicated when it takes him two years to edit a film he only filmed at the, the quote magic hour whenever the sun was setting and when the sun was rising so this took forever to film and uh it's set in uh the Texas Panhandle in uh, the 40s, I believe. A cool story of a love and hardship. Go go watch it, beautiful, just for the cinematography alone. Cast Away with Tom Hanks. I'd never seen, but uh, it was another great film. The ending was a little bit flat, I have to admit, but the time on the island definitely made up with it. One of Tom's best performances for sure. And then I got to Matt Damon's best performance for me, at least, in the talented Mr. Ripley, four and a half stars for me there. And I uh, did not expect to like this film as much as I did, but Matt Damon plays a guy named Mr. Ripley, who uh, just <laughs> kind of pulls the wool over people's eyes here. And Again, a, uh, a little bit of a darker twist to uh, Mr. Ripley here than what you'd expect. I'll just leave it at that. Then we got uh, one of my only five-star films I've given this year. I'm kind of stingy on these five stars because I really really uh, want to keep them special, man. But we got 2012's The Master from Paul Thomas Anderson, one of the more notable directors of this century. And here you have one of my favorite actors of all time in Philip Seymour Hoffman as a part religious-like, kind of cult-like, psychoanalysis guru leader. And he takes in Joaquin Phoenix, and this is set in the 50s. Phoenix is kind of a bit of a drifter, comes on to uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman's boat. Just a beautifully shot film that had a screenplay that was rock solid and acting performances that were out of this world. Amy Adams also is in here and uh, she does a wonderful, wonderful job as a uh, lead actress. Definitely highly recommend this one if you're a fan of uh, any of those actors or uh, Paul Thomas Anderson. Then we had Walk Hard, the Dewey Cox story. And for a music channel, this is the one I would suggest pretty much the most because uh, it parodies essentially every music biopic you've ever seen in your life. You have John C. Riley playing uh, Dewey Cox, and uh, they just poke fun at a bunch of different uh, tropes that you'd see in these types of movies, as well as artists that uh, we know and love, everybody from Dylan to Bo to the Beatles. He uh, actually meets the Beatles uh, over in India, and uh, there were some fantastic scenes there. I really enjoyed this one. Pretty funny. And then we got Blind Spotting. Shout out to my guy Javier for suggesting this one. I uh, it dug this. Came out in 2018. Uh, great kind of uh, look again about uh, racial relations and uh, just hardships in that regard. Again, lots of twists and turns here. Beautifully shot. And we got the Big Chill from 1983. I dug the premise of this. There's a group of friends that were from a college. They reconvene after the suicide of one of their buddies and um, just have to deal with how their lives have changed. Harkening back to the glory days, I guess you'd say. Then we got Bull Durham with Kevin Cosner. Uh, and, you know, as a fan of sports, I have always heard good things about this one. And I thought it was a solid movie. Uh, nothing that's like blew me away per se but hey man it was a fun fun way to spend a night as well as bad education and this is a story i wouldn't believe unless it was actually true really details out the fact uh this school district and this uh, principal stole millions of dollars and uh at certain points i was like i don't know man this is a little ridiculous and then at the end they said it was all true hugh jackman is fantastic in this uh, nice little hidden gem there as well as uh, allison and janney and then we go to a coming of age film with matthew mcconaughey from 2012 called mud definitely suggested that one i always enjoy mcconaughey's performances and then we get airplane literally one of the funniest movies i've ever seen I, there were just so many jokes in here that just were right up my alley with my type of dry humor in there. If you've never seen it, man, uh, jump on that. Then we had a hard day's night. Watch this with the family. I needed to see this for quite some time. All y'all were telling me to. And, uh, man, I, I dug it. 
acting performances obviously weren't out of this world but uh hey man it was the beatles on screen the musical performances were the highlight for me and i'll be looking forward to help as well and then we got saint elmo's fire we <laughs> talk about saint elmo's fire man i'm telling y'all you could not like write more unlikable characters if you tried everybody in this movie was terrible and uh you had rob lowe out here trying to fulfill his uh, dream to be a great saxophone player like he's john coltrane or something i don't know man this one fell real flat for me but then we had city slickers with billy crystal uh just a solid uh kind of comedy here i don't really have too much more to add then we have american honey from a24 one of my favorite uh, production studios going today shia labeouf's in this it's uh, a little on the long side shave off 30 minutes and uh, i think that grade goes up but i uh, really enjoy the cinematography and uh, slickness in all of the a24 films her talking about phoenix he pops up again this was definitely a, a famous film back in 2013 you have scarlett johansson as a uh, operating system and uh, phoenix falls in love <laughs> with the operating system so imagine falling in love with siri essentially and that's your basic plot of the film some people swear by this film i uh, thought it was pretty to look at an interesting concept uh it didn't resonate with me as deeply as some others but hey man still a solid film not as solid as Warren Betty's Heaven Can Wait, man. Talk about a hidden gem. This was one of my uh, favorite finds of the month from 1978. Here you have a quarterback who dies, but uh, he wasn't supposed to. They People in heaven took him up too early. Then they had to send him back down into the body of a rich man. And then he trains to <laughs> go and uh, be the quarterback for the Super Bowl. And so uh, it, this movie is a lot better than what I'm making it sound right there, all right? But check this one out. Then we had Crazy Stupid Love. Honestly, I can't remember anything about this film. I'm going to keep it real. That's probably why I gave it two stars. So, and then we got Blood Diamond with Leo and this again was a very solid leo performance one of the better actors of course going in the game today uh touching on a topic uh that's pretty heavy with the africa blood diamonds and uh, i thought this one was very solid as well as a new film that's getting a lot of buzz palm springs which is a hulu exclusive if you have that if you're a fan of uh, something like groundhog day or edge of tomorrow with tom cruise kind of those time loop movies i think you'll really dig this they kind of put a different spin on it with some sci-fi elements um i'm really uh doug sandberg's performance in here and the concept uh though it uh, didn't maybe live up of course to groundhog day it did enough different in there for me to not uh, just be like oh we're a carbon copy then we had mildred pierce joan crawford stars as miss mildred pierce 1945 had to give another five star rating here this one blew me away it just sucked me in right away i didn't know being black and white and being from 1945 how this would resonate in 2020 but that's how you know art's great is when it holds up after all this time i didn't know anything about the story going in didn't really know anything about the uh the director the actors the people but i absolutely love this and then we had horrible bosses which uh, some people, uh, many of my friends, thinks you know one of the better comedies of uh, of the past 10, 15 years or so. Didn't hit for me like that, but uh, still a solid film. Then we had Catch Me With You Can going with uh, Leo yet again, and Tom Hanks. Man, Tom Hanks, love the guy. Not a great performance by him in my opinion here his accent goes in and out a lot but uh, again another story you wouldn't believe unless it was true there was a lot of great twists and turns in this the kind of tension that builds throughout the film then we had the biopic ali and as somebody who is you know as legendary as muhammad ali is man this one just fell a little flat they tried to do i think too much in this they went uh more shallow in a lot of stuff than uh, going deep on a, a few topics. It's tough in these biopics to cover everything, especially when you got Ali. Will Smith does a great performance. I like the boxing scenes, but all in all, just a little flat. Then we had the pianist Roman Polanski's 2002 film about Polish a pianist and i uh, am not going to butcher the man's name but it was just a wonderful wonderful film a harrowing film be a horror film if it wasn't true very haunting as you remember the holocaust remember 
what happened in World War II and uh, just the, the life story of this man was a very enthralling, great cinematography. Definitely suggest this one. And we had Final Destination, which was uh, definitely the worst film I watched this month. It was literally never scary for me. I don't know, maybe back in 2000 it would have hit a bit different, but uh, very weak. And then I finished the month off, though, on a strong note with When Harry Met Sally, Meg Ryan, and Billy Crystal. I'm normally not uh, gung-ho on rom-coms, but this this is one of the better ones you'll ever see, especially like the way they looked at the relationship between Harry and Sally over two decades because, hey man, don't we all want that? Don't we want that Harry and Sally relationship? All right, that'll do it, y'all, for today's video. Uh, be sure to check back next month at the uh, at the end of the month to see what, uh, what August has in store. A lot of uh, great stuff, I'm sure, is uh, waiting to be uncovered. Let me know your thoughts on uh, any of these albums or films you're familiar with. Always love talking and hearing y'all's uh, y'all's perspective on these things appreciate you guys love y'all and uh until next time i'll see you